Michigan Technical University. Technological. Technological University. Yeah. And uh, we're here on a nice cold uh, April morning, right outside the Ren Center, GM's yeah. headquarters here. And you have got kind of a homebrew hybrid, but you took an Equinox for the Challenge X competition. And since for the last couple years, three years or so, have put in your own, well, what have you done to it? Why don't you tell us? Well, we took a 2005 Equinox and um, we were given the task of improving fuel economy by 30% and uh, reducing emissions by about 30%. We said to ourselves, well, what's going to be the easiest way to do that? And uh, what we have here four years later is a parallel through the road hybrid. Uh, it has a gasoline engine powering the front wheels and a 55 kilowatt electric motor at the rear wheels. And uh, it recaptures energy through regenerative braking. Uh, it's charge sustaining, so you don't have to plug it in. Uh, you pretty much drive it like a regular car. You know, turn the key and you're ready to go. Um, it's easy to drive in traffic. It's an automatic. Uh, it retains pretty much every creature comfort you could ask for, uh, including the stock performance of the vehicle. And it really does improve fuel economy. And uh, we're hoping it's going to reduce emissions. We have a custom-built catalyst. Uh, we've been struggling with emissions over the last couple of years, but we think we finally have it down. Have you reached that 30% goal? Is that yeah, we, we think we've exceeded the 30% uh, goal for uh, fuel economy, I mean, in our testing at least. It, it changes everything. Um, when you do a, a cold start in Texas and it's you know 50 degrees, and you do a cold start at Michigan Tech and it's uh, zero degrees and the car's been outside all night you know, and it starts, it's, it's a huge difference. It's something that the, the consumer demands and we really have tested the, the car in almost every possible weather condition. You were describing a few of the things, and we'll go out and take a look at the car. Some of the additions that you've done to the car, um, aside from the powertrain, which yeah. we'll get to in a minute, uh, things like the air dam in front, the lighter seat in the back. Um, you know, how did you go about thinking of, of what to add? Were you starting with a pretty blank slate, or? Well, um, Michigan Tech's been a part of the hybrid vehicle competitions for the last like four competitions or fifteen years, I think it is, and. Uh, We've always focused on being a, the lightest vehicle, um, so one of the goals in Challenge X was how are we going to make this the lightest vehicle. Uh, we're about 200 pounds lighter than the next vehicle in our competition, and uh, th it's paid off. Like the polycarbonate windows, uh, the rear seat that's 70 pounds lighter than stock, um, every little detail, uh, it really adds up. And uh, we, it's, it's paid off in terms of fuel economy because we're, we're figuring about 1 to 2% per 100 pounds uh, increase in fuel economy. Mm -hmm. You're in charge of the powertrain, right? right. Um, other teams are going with a biodiesel, I believe, and there's, there's lots of options. You, you, didn't, you weren't told, okay, you need to make it a hybrid. Um, how, how did the decision come about to choose this particular powertrain when you were initially looking at the car? Uh, well, we, we explored diesel for a while and then we've eventually gone to gas. Um, and it helped a lot just with reducing the weight of the vehicle because the gasoline engine is so much lighter than the competing diesels. Uh, and then in addition to that, meeting emissions was a lot a lot easier of a job for us. There's a lot of, a lot of equipment we don't have to have on board the vehicle for that. So. Um, but other than that, it's, it's a little more consumer acceptable. It starts a lot better in the cold weather. You can just get in it and drive, and uh, there's no worries as far as that goes. So, and, and, and then just availability of gas, because not everywhere you go, especially up in the UP, you can't find diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of places you can, but you know sometimes if you're making a long trip, you just can't afford to run out. So, mm -hmm. um, And then also with the price of fuel, I don't, we wouldn't have gotten, um, we wouldn't have been able to get a whole lot better fuel economy with diesel just based on the way our architecture is set up and the way the hybrid works. Um, it's just about optimized for what we have. So. Okay. Well, let's go take a look at the car. All right. Yeah, so um, what we've got basically is a car that, you know, put the key in, turn it, fires up like stock, and um, we even have the stock shifter here. And, Everything, it's, it's, if you didn't know the difference, you, you might let it slip your mind that it's not some college-built hybrid. Um, the reality of the matter is that, that we did build this car, and we probably have touched every nut and bolt on it, and I'm not going to lie, every single nut and bolt. <laughs> like, you don't realize how many times, you know, we've, we've had to remove the front clip or remove the front subframe or, you know. The gas tank. Yeah. The gas tank. You never really remove a gas tank from a car, but I swear we've done it like 30 times in this one. Just because, you know, oh, there's something behind the gas tank we gotta get to. And, uh, yeah, it's. 
keeps you busy. Is it like on, on you know a NASCAR race where you don't have the pit crew to okay get in there and take that gas tank off stat? <laughs> well, you want to hear a NASCAR race? Um, we were we were traveling from the Milford Proving Grounds to uh, Houghton Lake. We were, we were supposed to be on nine and ten news at five a.m. and uh, we left Milford, Michigan at, at about seven o'clock at night to, to make the trip up trip up there and. Uh, we got north of Bay City, and it started snowing. And when I mean snowing, I it was it was as snowing as bad as I've ever seen snow. And we had our run flat tires on, which are summer all season at best tires. And I said to the guys, we had a chase truck, and I, I said, you know, I don't feel comfortable driving the car. It, it's got a value, you know, around two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and we've got another seventy miles to make it to Houghton Lake. We stopped at a gas station. Not gonna lie, I put the filler neck in the gas can, the, or in the in the gas filler, and the two other guys got out the lug wrench and the the jack, and we did a four tire pit stop and uh, refueling in about uh, 14 minutes in temperatures below zero with a wind chill that was just brutal and snowing like crazy. The guy at the gas station that I went in to pay, he looked at me and he said. What are you guys doing in that car with all those stickers? And why did you change your tires? <laughs> I'm like, well, it's a hybrid, and we're doing uh, testing, and we need snow tires. <laughs> Some cool things that like you don't see on cars ever are like polycarbonate windows. That that's plastic. It it works just like a regular window. It's just one of those things. Every time I see it, I'm like, oh, it's a sweet window. <laughs> you know, it, it saved 30 pounds. It's it's not a huge deal. They're expensive. Um, as we're as we're cruising around here this morning, about what um, what sort of mileage are we getting? Um, instantaneous mileage, I don't have, but um, based on the fuel economy testing that we've done, and Doug and I have done almost all of the testing, I'd approximate like with this this speed and uh, consistency on our drive cycle, we're in the, the mid 30s. Uh, so that's pretty impressive for a vehicle this size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. We're utilizing a lot of electric power. Um, I can kind of explain that to you. Um, you'll, you'll feel the, the car, well, I can feel it because I've driven it a lot, but um, you get like a, a boost from zero to 45 miles an hour. Um, that's where you're really getting your electric power. And that's really taking the load off the engine. Like if I go wide open throttle now, we actually slow down a little bit because the engine's trying to, to pull the car rather than you know the electric motor powering the car. And uh, our fastest acceleration is about like 65% throttle position, and uh, it, it's really utilizing the torque from the electric motor. Um, but you never really have to go wide open throttle to make it through a day-to-day -day drive cycle, um, which is fairly impressive. Uh, it you can you can hear the difference in the air intake um, based on engine load and you know throttle position, and. You know, it's, it's almost like a, you're telling yourself, you know, I'm getting better fuel economy because I'm just tipping in and I'm, I'm relying on the electric powertrain to do all the work. Uh, you, can, you can tell on, on deceleration, you almost, it feels like the brakes are kind of dragging, that's the regen. Um, when you're coasting down, it's kind of weird at first, you know, you, you just like set your foot on the brake pedal and uh, it basically just turns on the brake lights so the car behind you knows, but the car will coast down on its own similar to a regular vehicle, but it, it's just a little bit more, uh, I guess, rapid deceleration, but it's not really that rapid at all. Um, it's just a, it's a different kind of vehicle, and not having driven a whole bunch of hybrids, it, it's, well, it's, it's our Michigan Tech car. It, it, there's nothing else like it. How's it doing on the Detroit roads? Um, well, you know, it's, there's a lot of potholes on it. <laughs>